Okay, I'm going to speak formally, but I do want to just start by saying thank you. This is unbelievable, unbelievable, and we all appreciate this massively, as does Brendan, who isn't here today, who is looking after the children. Um, yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Proper Yorkshire people. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, so, it's not going to be easy. There are some things in life you should never have to do. Last night I had to go and identify my sister's body. Yes, this was Jo Cox MP and she was many things to many people in her too short life. But she was my sister, my only sibling, my parents first born child, a wife and a mum. This is a very surreal situation. <laughs> My parents and my partner and I are quite private people and Jo, in true character, had fully respected our wish to remain out of the public eye. But I could not continue to watch the overwhelming outpouring of genuine grief, sympathy and love that there has been since this horrendous incident occurred without speaking on behalf of Jo's family. We want to say a most sincere and heartfelt thank you to everyone who has expressed their love and affection for Jo and sent their thoughts and sympathy to us. It has genuinely made a difference and helped us through some dark times in the last 48 hours. We would particularly like to thank the police and emergency services who have been outstanding in the care they have provided to Jo and ourselves. Absolutely outstanding. We'd also like to thank the brave and courageous gentleman, Bernard Kenny, who tried to help her in her hour of need. Our thoughts and thanks go to him and his family, and we wish him well in his recovery. What an amazing man, yeah. Joe's team of staff, both here and in London, have been a source of support and strength to her since she was elected, and she loved them dearly. I would particularly like to pay tribute to Sandra and Fazila, who were with her on Thursday. Two of the most wonderful women you could hope to meet. From a very young age, all Joe ever wanted was for everyone to be happy. We were brought up to see the positive in everything and everyone, and have endeavoured to do so all our lives. Our parents instilled in us a real glass half full mentality. And whilst I sometimes tend to add a large measure of Yorkshire cynicism to this, Jo generally did not. She only saw the good. We know that there are some evil people in this world, but there are an awful lot of good people too. When Jo would get abuse on Facebook or Twitter, we would talk and sometimes cry together. But she would still focus on the positive and talk about the silent majority who didn't always shout the loudest, but who she knew were in her corner. I am somewhat embarrassed to say that I was at times part of that silent majority. I don't do social media and would shout at the TV or get upset at home instead. But over the past 48 hours, people have not been silent. They have been vocal and passionate and have spoken from the heart with genuine emotion and no hidden agendas. Jo would have loved it. We have to continue this strength and solidarity in the days, months and years to come as part of Jo's legacy. And to focus on, as Joe would say, that which unites us and not which divides us. For now, our family is broken. But we will mend over time. And we will never let Joe leave our lives. She will live on through all the good people in the world. Through Brendan, through us. and through her truly wonderful children who will always know 
what an utterly amazing woman their mother was. She was a human being and she was perfect. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you.